Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, uttering the famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But while everyone was cheering this feat, some scientists were scratching their heads, because the data collected from the moon had too many shocking anomalies. Not only did it not reveal the mysteries of the moon as expected, on the contrary, it made the moon even more confusing. So what amazing discoveries have scientists made? Is the moon man-made? If so, who made it? Well, we're gonna take a look today. Scientists think that the moon could be described with two words, strange and coincidental. It's strange because judging from existing astronomical knowledge, its existence is particularly unscientific. First, there's no known satellite to host star ratio as big as that of the moon. Second, no satellite has a circular orbit except for artificial ones, yet the orbit of the moon is virtually circular. The reason we say coincidental is because a lot of the moon's data has abnormal coincidences, almost as though it were specifically designed to be a certain way. For example, the distance between the sun and the earth is 395 times that of the distance between the earth and the moon. And the diameter of the sun is also exactly 395 times that of the moon. As such, people on earth see the moon and the sun as being the same size, allowing humans to watch astronomical phenomena like total eclipses. In addition, the moon happens to have an inclination angle between the sun and the earth, allowing it to reflect the sun's rays onto the earth at night and illuminate our night sky. Moreover, the moon rotates at the speed of 16.56 kilometers per hour, while also simultaneously revolving around the Earth. The time it takes the Moon to make one full rotation by itself is just the same amount of time it takes for the Moon to make a full revolution around Earth. So one side of the Moon is always facing our planet. These many coincidences have puzzled scientists. They've always really hoped that through the astronauts' trips onto the satellite, the mystery of the Moon would be unveiled. Yet unexpectedly, their research on all the data brought back by the astronauts has only uncovered more surprises. On November the 20th, 1969, Apollo 12 astronauts hit the lunar surface with the ascending section of the lunar module, and a lunar quake occurred immediately. The moon shook for about an hour, and the lingering sound lasted for a long time. It's like the ringing of a church bell. The shock waves only propagate from the epicenter to the surface of the moon but not to the inside of the moon, just like in a completely hollow metal sphere. So scientists repeated this experiment many times in subsequent moon landings with similar results. This surprised them as they thought, is this moon hollow? However, the experiments have yet to reach a final conclusion. Scientists hoped that a large meteorite impact would occur on the moon. By measuring the difference in the propagation time of the vertical and horizontal moon seismic waves, they could prove whether or not the interior of the moon was hollow. A mega meteorite crashing into the moon is an event with an extremely low probability of happening. However, perhaps it was divine will deliberately trying to help humanity unravel the mystery of the moon. On May 13, 1972, a large meteorite crashed into the lunar surface. The energy of the impact was equivalent to the power of 200 tons of TNT. The huge moon shock indeed spread to the inside of the moon, if the moon was a solid sphere, then this kind of shock should have been repeated several times. However, what actually happened once again shocked scientists. After the shock entered the moon's interior, it quickly disappeared. Now there's only one explanation for this happening. The vibrating longitudinal wave was eaten up by huge empty space after it entered the interior of the moon. There's also a data result from measurements of the moon that also supports the suspicion that the moon isn't solid, and that is unusually low density. So NASA's Apollo 16 and the moon surface report said that studies on moon quakes have shown that there is a 40 mile thick hard layer inside the lunar crust. Now, how hard is this hard layer? Two of the first astronauts who landed on the moon took turns shoveling the hard soil with all their might to plant their American flag into the ground yet they could only insert the flagpole a few centimeters deep. Pretty hard around here. Now scientists measured the density of lunar rock specimens and found that the density is much higher than that of earth rocks. 
The density of earth rock is 2.7 to 2.8 grams per centimeters cubed, while the density of lunar rock is 3.2 to 3.4 grams per centimeter cubed. However, according to calculations, the overall average density of the moon is 3.33 grams per centimeter cubed, nearly half of that of the Earth, which is 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed, meaning that the core of the moon has a low density. There's another peculiar feature that also shows that the interior of the moon should be empty. It is the low magnetic field of the moon. The Earth's magnetic field originates from its core, the Earth's core is divided into an inner core and an outer core. The inner core is thought to be solid and the outer core liquid. Now the liquid shell can flow quickly and produce an induced current to generate a magnetic field. The strength of the Earth's magnetic field is between 0.35 aerosteads and 0.7 aerosteads. Therefore, if it's a solid sphere, there should be a magnetic field. Scientists have discovered that the moon has almost no magnetic field According to the direct measurement of lunar rock samples and the magnetic field on the surface of the moon, the magnetic field around the moon is less than one one thousandth of the Earth's magnetic field. As such, it supports the notion that the moon might be hollow, lacking any core. When it comes to the origin of the moon, scientists believe that there are three possibilities. The first is called the capture theory. It suggests that the moon was originally a star in space, when it passed near Earth, it was captured by the Earth's own gravitational field and became its satellite. Now there's also a co-formation theory. As the solar system developed into what it is today, it condensed from a cloud of dust into what is now the Earth, a moon evolved by its side to rotate around it. Now the third theory is called the giant impact hypothesis, or the split theory. It suggests that the Earth once suddenly exploded and part of it was ejected to become the moon. That's my very simplified explanation of these theories. So let's analyze these three hypotheses, starting with the capture theory. The moon, with a diameter equivalent to 27% of the Earth's orbit, being easily absorbed by the Earth's orbit is an extremely unlikely phenomenon for astronomers. The two masses would have to be at such a precise angle and velocity that it's nearly impossible to perfectly enter Earth's orbit as it has. If the angle wasn't perfectly met, the moon might zip past Earth, possibly changing course to some degree. Then how probable is the co-formation theory and the giant impact hypothesis? They're related to the mystery of the moon rocks. At present, the oldest rock found on the Earth is 3.5 billion years old. It was found in the Great Rift Valley region in East Africa. When Armstrong picked up a rock from the moon, he couldn't have imagined that the rock in his hand was more than 3.6 billion years old. In the following several moon landings, the ages of the rocks brought back by the astronauts from the surface of the moon weren't all the exact same, but most of them were more than 4 billion years old. But that's not the most surprising thing. Scientists have analyzed the rocks on the moon's surface and found that there are two rocks that are up to 20 billion years old. Scientists believe that these are the oldest items thus found in our universe, because the age of the universe as we know it is no more than 20 billion years old. That might mean that the moon is not only older than Earth and the Sun, but much older. However, I also think that these rocks could be ancient space debris that the moon constantly gets hit with. Even from the most conservative estimates, the moon has a history of 5 to 10 billion years. This age shows that the moon might not originate from our solar system at all. If so, naturally, we can assume that it might not have come from the same origins as Earth, nor would it have split off from Earth. Now, when you really think about it, the explosion or split theory is pretty idealistic, isn't it? Allow me to break this down with some healthy sarcasm. A primitive Earth explodes from some catastrophe, but creates two nearly perfectly round spheres like the Moon and Earth. The Moon gets ejected just right into its current orbit, forming a virtually circular orbit, making it one of a kind in our solar system. This theory makes me think that I could go blow up some rock from a mine and from the explosion, I could expect to make myself a perfectly sparkling diamond ring. There are many mysteries about the moon, but we won't list them all here. In fact, you may have now realized that all these mysteries point to a hypothesis that the moon may not have been formed naturally in the universe. If that's the case, then who could have been capable of creating the moon? Many people actually believe that the moon was made by prehistoric humans. They say that prehistoric humans lived on the Earth long before our current human history. 
They had an extremely advanced technological civilization and made the moon to illuminate the earth at night. In fact, there is some evidence that seems to possibly support this view. Scientists have discovered that the moon contains a large number of concentrated metal veins, such as titanium, uranium-236, neptunium-237, etc. Now these substances are all necessary materials for building spacecraft and controlling nuclear energy. In their natural state, such as on the Earth, the distribution of these metal ore is unlikely to be concentrated in large numbers. Moreover, after analyzing the 380 kilograms of lunar soil samples brought back by astronauts, scientists discovered that they contain pure iron and pure titanium. This is a pure metal ore that won't be found in nature. But how do smelted metals get on the moon? And I must say, the method of generating light with the moon seems very eco-friendly. It doesn't require electricity or generate pollution. Just imagine if our modern technology had the wisdom and had become advanced enough to create such a large satellite and use its surface reflection to illuminate the dark side of the Earth. Would people do this? But it is true that this hypothesis may be too difficult to accept. After all, to build a spacecraft or man-made celestial body the size of the moon is incredible and unimaginable for mankind's engineering and technological capabilities today. If you've seen our other videos on prehistoric civilizations, you'll know that the wisdom from our past, in many regards, exceeds today's wisdom. If you know of any other interesting features of the moon or other celestial bodies, please share. My friends, what are your thoughts on the origin of the moon? Please leave a comment down below and let me know. I'll see you next time.